Welcome back to the Fear and Beer Podcast, where we discuss all things Halloween Horror Nights, horror movies, and just a little bit of beer. So kill the lights, grab a cold one, and join us as we dive into this mad world we love. I'm Nick. I'm Seamus. And I'm Jamie. Like scary movies. Uh Uh-huh. Here's Johnny. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. You miss me. Aren't you drinking? I never drink. Why? And as a reminder to all listening, if you want to help us to continue growing as a podcast, don't forget to leave us a five-star review on whichever streaming platform you use. To stay up to date with us and all of our episodes, be sure to follow all of our socials. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Fear and Beer Pod. Feel free to reach out to us. We love to interact with you all. And we made it. We made it through opening weekend. We all survived. We have faced our fears. We met Sinister and Surreal. And yet we live to tell the tale. So let's get into our instant slash not so instant reactions because, well, by the time you hear this on Friday, we'll have already kind of gone through a couple more days and we've already waited almost a week to get you our instant reactions. So we're recording them instantly. Uh, We're recording them on the Tuesday. So if we notice stuff at the event Wednesday night or Thursday night, those thoughts aren't going to be present yet because... We're trying to make sure that we can get to the event. I don't want to record on Wednesdays or Thursdays when we are going to be there on on those days. Or Sometimes we will, but at least for the first couple of weeks, I want to make sure we're there as often as possible because I already miss it. It's been two days (laughs) or one day and I already miss the fog. But yeah, we're going to give our initial reactions today. We are going to go through all of our weekends because we all had very different opening weekends. They all varied. And we'll kind of go through scare zone by scare zone, house by house, and we'll kind of just give our initial thoughts. And, you know, obviously we're not going to re-rank anything yet. That, that'll that come later in the season because as much as we love opening weekend, you definitely don't. It's tough to rank it right away when it's ever so changing with the remainder of yeah, the event. Yeah, I mean, we went through one house like at the end of Sunday and I caught something or I saw something differently that I hadn't seen on the previous two days. Mm-hmm. So like they make these adjustments throughout. So opening weekend obviously is going to come with its flaws and, and we kind of understand that there's, there's just no way around some of those things. So once people start getting more comfortable, once things start getting figured out, I'm sure we'll have a better read for how the, it's going to kind of, end for us in in terms of rankings but for right now we're just going to give initial thoughts on stuff like that so obviously this is going to be pretty spoiler filled so if if you have not gone to the event yet and you want to remain completely blind i don't know if this is necessarily the episode for you because we are going to be talking about everything that's in these houses um as much as we we remember i i I don't really care about doing a uh, non-spoiler review. It's kind of, and we're just going to say everything's good and we enjoyed it for the most part. So let's just, we'll, we'll get right into stuff. I, I don't have a beer. Like I said, it's Tuesday night. I'm sort of still recovering and I also forgot. So there's that. I have, I have, I have water. <laughs> Staying I have, hydrated. I have the tail end of my orange sodi from, from mm. McDonald's because I'm a fat piece of shit. I was but, hoping um, it's not. No, no, no more. You already had a couple sips and the rest <laughs> is mine. <laughs> <laughs> mm. hits the spot yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm detoxing from from the weekend so yeah I drinking water tonight a little two-day detox until we get back into the fog i mean after that light bulb drink i don't know how anybody could drink alcohol for the next few days but oof. absolutely well, definitely... diabolical you definitely Wait, won't have a cold was, sure. was not good after you <laughs> sorry universal you can't win them all no. right after you drink the fucking light bulb of robitussin and it was but, warm <laughs> Yeah, that's a really weird. That's a it's really a weird, weird. Go, right road to go. I mean, even if that's you don't hard. make down whiskey drinks like old fashions, you you still put one ice cube in there to yeah, give a little bit of a temperature change. But yeah, yeah. so like I said, we're we're gonna kind of get into our main segments. I wanted to shout out a couple people. I'm hoping I don't forget anybody, but some people that affected our opening weekend in the positives. No, not that anybody did it in the negatives, but leading up to the event and the event shout out to Alex who found our PayPal because he, well, he asked me, he didn't really find it, but he, he sent us money for drinks. He sent us money for a drink each 
That was really and nice. Told him he didn't need to do this, and he still did it anyways because mm-hmm. he's the man. Also, if you watch or comment on YouTube, he's also the one that kind of time stamps everything for us mm-hmm. as far as kind of chapters, so to speak. So, Alex, you can code this one as the Alex Thank You Corner. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was super, super cool. And I'm sure we'll run into him in the fog at some point. But a couple people, I, I again, sorry if I miss people. I'm sure I did, but we ran in, or I ran into. I don't know if you're with me. I ran into Jenna. She won our t-shirt contest. Nice. And she also inspired me to rock my let's all go to the lobby shirt on Saturday. So I must have run into her on Friday, opening day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Seamus was with me, I think. When we were, yeah, I was right outside. Yes, we did. Because you introduced her as me. The uh, You introduced me to her as the girl that won the t-shirt in the contest. Yes, so. I was like, yes. Yes, I was with you. Uh, Chris, uh, funny enough, Chris like tagged us on Instagram on the way into the park listening to our podcast and then we just happened to run into him right after and they hooked us up with some super super cool little bracelets. i know I hold on my dresser i think oh i got it right here this is my like hhn like throw corner of all this stuff but me and jamie swapped i grabbed i got the little insidious one it's got if you're watching on youtube it's got a really cool it's got well you can't really see the focus is out but it's a little lantern Got these really cool balls. Say help. It says insidious. Very, very cool. And then Jamie and yes, ended up grabbing one as well. Yes, Chris, you actually heard it here. Nick liked my insidious bracelet so much. <laughs> and I was so kind to trade with him for this super cute triplets of terror bracelet that has two little like uh, cakes on the sides of it. And then it has a little golden axe. Super cute with little balloon bracelets. I love it. This one's really cute. And I really like the triplets house too. So I was fine trading with Nick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, we ran into Adam over at the HHN bar, gave him a little little swag bag. So if you do see that we're there, let us know because we'll probably have goodie bags. If we're out of goodie bags, we'll definitely have stickers. Uh, so ran into cute. Sam and Ray at the Dead Coconut Club. So nice. So funny. We sat right next Saturday, to them. Friday, Saturday, during the rainstorm. I was sat Sunday. Sunday. I was Sunday. Sunday. It was Sunday. I was there. The rainstorm. Yes. Yep. Um, I ran into, I think it was John from Theme Park Universe at Dead Coconut on Saturday quickly because that was before I went to my little tour. Uh, we saw Scott, or I saw I saw Scott on Saturday walking out of the lines. I think he was rocking, I think the lobby shirt as well. That was a popular one. I've been seeing a lot of the lobby shirts. So I if knew you it be, would be. I'm if glad. If you want to be cool like everybody else, go to our T Public page and you too can wear a fear and beer while Let's all go to the lobby shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, we caught up with Dakota a little bit at the Dead Coconut Club. Yes. If you okay. are not listening or you haven't listened to previous episodes where Dakota was just on with Lauren, they started out their own. They they kind of rebranded. So they're going now by the Horror Nights Gauntlet on, I think, all streaming services. So go check them out. Give them a listen. Give them a follow. I like that name. Um, it's great. Oh, that was Dakota. Yes. Yeah. Who was it? I, I, I'm sorry, Dakota. I thought you were actually the gentleman from Murder on Main. I, you guys look a lot alike, so I wasn't sure. That's my Seamus fault. doesn't I go on. I don't know people by their faces. I know them by their voices, and I didn't. I didn't. Must not have heard correctly. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. But it's very nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> um, we ran into Tim from RIP Tour on. We did. Sunday. Yeah, we did. Sunday. What's as up, well? Tim? And me and me and Tim are on the naughty list. I guess we're both. We're number suspect. one and number two on the suspect list in the uh, Dead Coconut Club on the Blumhouse. But I am number one, Tim. I reign supreme. <laughs> and we quickly, quickly saw Ryan from DOA in line for Slaughter. Something in passing. It might have been Slaughter. Slaughter Cinema. Really Towards quickly. the end of the night? Yes. Yes. I think so. Quickly mm-hmm. saw him. Um, and I think there's some others. And I, I can't. I, I, I did my best to try to remember everybody, but. Shout out to everybody who sees us in the parks. It means a lot. It really makes my weekend like more than it makes makes your weekend. I'm sure. I when people are like, "Oh, it's are you guys from here?" Like, yes, please come say hi. If I try to stay as active on Instagram while in the park as I can, while still enjoying the event and still trying to get some sort of content at times, but I'm try to get pretty good at like posting where we're at. But just hit us up, and if we can make something happen, we can make something happen. Obviously. There's a lot of like, I'm here, I'm in line, I'm in this line, I'm getting out. Sometimes it's it's hard to line everything up, but we'll do our best to, to try to at least say hi real quick. So please feel free. Yeah, it's cool. 
That's I was recognized for the first time without the benefit of having Nick with me. So that was pretty <laughs> cool. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. It definitely makes sense. It wasn't a, hey, are you Nick? No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> the other, other guy. No, this, um, time, this time was it your Seamus, right? I'm like, yes. I, actually, I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's, that is I. The dragon that be me. The dragon lover, as all the people in our fantasy football draft <laughs> last night were sure to point out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's just kind of run down everybody's opening weekend, like what days we we did, what we got accomplished. Um, so, Jamie, why don't you kick us off? Because I think you probably had the most prestigious of opening weekends out of the three of us. It was a very fun opening weekend, but also very tiring opening weekend for me. I'm a sleepy girl. This was exhausting weekend for me. The latest I have stayed up in many of nights in the last couple months. So on Friday night, opening night is a little bit different. Kind of sad because I didn't get to hang out with Nick and Seamus and all our friends like we usually do, but I was able to attend media night for the website that I write for Macabre Daily, which... I also finished my full review and house rankings, which you could go check out at macabdaily.com. Shameless, shameless self plug. <laughs> but um, so yeah, that was a really great experience. We got to go through all the houses, which in recent years, I don't think that I was able to do all the houses in one night on opening night, kind of to get my early on um first impressions of them so that was pretty cool um the whole experience was a really awesome time it was really i was telling nick and Seamus, i was like it was really really fun and i had a great time but i was like man i actually felt like i was really working (laughs) and i was like i didn't get to see all my friends and everything but again thank you to universal for having me and macabre daily there it was it was a great time and hopefully next year maybe we can get it for the podcast as well so while they don't hate us so (laughs) no so I can I can bring Nick and he can not get mad at me because I guys enjoy it. <laughs> get mad at you. But oh well. I wanted I wish Nick and Seamus could have been there with me to experience as well. But speaking of Tim. If they from invite us, I'm gonna humbly I'm gonna humbly deny the request until oh my God, too so. late. Too late. But I, <laughs> I was also a little nervous because obviously this was my first time doing a media event, but um luckily in my group I had some familiar faces. I had Matt from Neo Zaz, and I had Tim from the RIP tour as well, which was very fun. So they kept me company for our tour. Also saw uh, Mike from 365 and a couple other fun folks that I like watching or listening to Grim Life Collective. That was probably the highlight of my night. I really enjoy watching their videos. If you don't watch them, you should really go check them out. A lot of cool filming locations, haunted events, and famous gravesite stuff like that. But yeah, so that was pretty much my opening night, opening week. I actually stayed home on Saturday. Nick went out and I ended up falling asleep for maybe almost like three and a half hours. That was supposed to be a nap. But when I don't set an alarm for naps, it's really risking it for the biscuit with that one, which it showed there because I didn't wake up till and you got seven no o'clock biscuit. and it was supposed to be a 430 wake up time and it ended up being two and a half hours after. So I ended up not making it on Saturday, but that's okay because I got nice and rested up. Nick and I went to Dead Coconut Club. Oh, excuse me. We went up with Seamus. We ended up doing the whole entire night, the whole shebang. I did it. I haven't done a technically stay and scream, even though we hung out at Dead Coconut because it was pouring down rain outside. So we did not want to get soaked out there, but we made it all night. We got to do six, seven out of the 10 houses. Good if amount. I'm not yeah. mistaken, we got to do we got to do a lot that night. I feel like Sunday was it seemed a little bit packed, but a lot of the wait times were not what they were presenting, which was kind of a nice treat because we waited what in line for Sidious for 70 minutes it was posted and we timed it at <laughs> your little cousin timed it at 33 minutes, which is insane. But it was kind of yes, nice. We that brought that my little 14 year old cousin through the insidious She's house. 14. She's 14. That's perfect. I told her I was like, man, I was like, you are much more braver than I was at that age. I mean, 14, I think is a good solid age to like start going and actually like enjoy it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, that was my opening weekend extravaganza. Nick, what, what, how was your opening weekend? Well, mine was good. I did. So Friday we did, oh God, my brain. I thought I had all my thoughts collected, but not really, I guess. Uh, (laughs) I was going to go to Seamus, but I'll go now. We did opening. We did stay. I did stay and scream. (laughs) I was cutting it pretty close to stay and scream on Friday. I think I 
just sort of misjudged what time I wanted to get there. And I was still trying to dodge the rain because it was coming in right at like that two. I was like, I'm going to leave at two. And then it started pouring. So I was like, I'll wait this out. So I left around probably three or so. But I got there right around four, four ish, four thirty ish. I, I wasn't sure I was going to make it in there, but I ran through New York Stay and Scream. The lines were insane for the IPs. So I wasn't going to get in line there. So I, I went over to Major Suites and there was about 15 people there. So I did that, met up with Alex and Eddie. We did Major Suites. And then right from there, we kind of huffed it over to the tents, the new tents, and we hit those houses. And then Friday, we just kind of moseyed along. We we got a lot accomplished. I think we did, I think I got like seven or so, six or seven houses done. We met up with Seamus. We met up with my other cousin who first time HHN goer, we'll, we'll maybe try and steal him. He doesn't like being on camera or video or anything like that, I don't think. So we'll uh, we'll try and get his thoughts on HHN from a, a complete new new buddy, like uh, newcomer to the event. Uh, we we can up- just have him be our cameraman and then talk from behind the camera. You yeah. know, a lot of those YouTube channels have like the cameraman that talks, but you never yeah. see who the you never see them. It'll be the mystery man, Ryan. You'll just do that. Yeah. Uh, met up with our uncle um, and we closed it out. I oh no no we didn't we we left at like well, we left at like one ish or so like. It was it got to the point where we were like, all right, um, I knew that I had a busy day on Saturday, so I didn't want to really push it too hard. So Saturday was really, really fun, something that I was not really ever expecting. I I didn't know if I was ever going to do an RIP tour, but I got asked by Horrors Untold. They they sent out an invitation to, to myself and a couple other HHN podcasters and content creators and we got to experience a private RIP tour, which is an absolute first for me. And I think we're going to have to do a private RIP tour every year now, at least once, one time, because it is for what you get out of the experience it is so, so worth it. Um, and again, you know, thank you to Horrors Untold for extending this offer to me because it's definitely a night I won't forget. And it's it was funny, too, because. Duff, Duff from um, HHN 365 was there. So I, I knew I had somebody that we were like, I, we knew everybody else was semi new to me. And I met up with Ken from Russia Fear and Pangolin. And then I, I wasn't sure who else was on the tour. I knew Duff and Ken were there with me. And then uh, Zandra came up, Zandra Ventures on Instagram, who it was a weird, like, I know you know me. I know I know you. There was a weird, like, story time with Nick. I also do photo and video on the side, and I did videography of a <laughs> nice, nice picture, Seamus. Uh, Seamus just sent me a picture of his cat drinking from his water while trying to record. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she is pretty serious. Um, where was I? I was doing, like, a video shoot for, for a couple, and Xandra was there, but didn't put two and two together until she saw the finished product and saw that I had done it and was like, Oh my God, you were there. So it was really cool meeting her finally, like in person for the first time. Oh, and now boots is being crazy on the camera as well. Um, so got to hang out with her for the whole RIP tour as well as everybody else. And then that's where we also met, uh, Brennan from park talk radio, who they're just awesome. Awesome. People it was a great, great night. We got, 19 houses done. We rode the mummy twice. We did food and drink. We went to the Fallon bar up top so we could look like very important VIP people. I pretty much got wined and dined. I felt like the pretty girl at prom. It's never going to happen to me again, but I just felt so like high up on the pedestal for once. And I'm usually one of the peasants in the line, but um, yep. Saturday was good. And then Sunday we went right back to it. We got a lot accomplished. Uh, We were running around with everybody. We met up with some more family. Uh, like I said, we brought our 14 year old cousin through Insidious. Uh, we met up with our friends Pete and Alicia. We met up with we met up with Brennan and Zandra again. We met up with Duff again. We man, these nights are, are all blending together now. Who else? I forget. I don't know. It was a long, long weekend, uh, but a lot was accomplished. So that was sort of my weekend. Seamus, what was your weekend like? Now that the Maybe the cat's done drinking and boots is yeah. After she's done contaminating my my water glass, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, you know what? 
I'll share this on Instagram so you can all see that I'm not crazy. This cat <laughs> was literally drinking. She won't use a regular water bowl, but don't worry. <laughs> she'll shove her fat face in, in, my, in my glass. But whatever, I digress. <laughs> While recording. Uh, of all yeah. times. Because this is what they do. Cats are apparently the smartest animal on planet Earth because they know when you start doing something, they're like, hey, I'm going to come annoy the shit out of you. <laughs> but you have this little princess. Um, <laughs> as far as the weekend goes, I, I think you guys have kind of covered it for me. Like, I didn't really do anything special or, or specific for me um, other than Friday night. I was there with you, Nick. Um, mm-hmm. Got to kind of experience the event for the first time with someone that that's new to the event, which is kind of cool. Um, and at the same time, just got to be back in, you know, in, into Horror Nights mode. And that, 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 that's always fun the the first night you go is always like the best night because you're finally back you you you're you're finally experiencing all the ideas and the houses that they've come up with for the season um so that's that's fun we didn't get through a ton of them i think we did four that night Mm -hmm. the lines are pretty pretty wild but all all in all it was was a good opening night and i you know i had a pretty good time saturday i wasn't there i was at exploria state well sorry in Co stadium now uh watching my city kick the shit out of Nashville. So (laughs) jokes on you, Nashville. Uh, And then Sunday we went again, like Nick and Jamie kind of already explained. I mean, I don't want to go through it all over again, but you know, it was really cool seeing everybody. Um, That's the first time. Yeah, It was the first time in a long time that I've actually closed the event. So thank y'all for that. Uh, Didn't get home (laughs) to three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I was like, (laughs) my, um, my, come on camera, my um, long standing, uh, anxiety was going haywire because I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to get in so much trouble getting home this late. But <laughs> it, all, all, it was a good night. Uh, I had a great time. It was so much fun meeting uh, uh, all of you. Uh, obviously, it's the first time for, for, for me to meet most of you, um, specifically uh, like Sandra and, and Brennan. It's really cool to kind of like meet you for, for the first time. Um, I, I'm sorry, the gentleman who they were with, what was his name? Oh. Brandon. 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 Brandon, you as well. It was great meeting you guys. Yep. Nice time. Um, Everyone's super nice. <laughs> and um, obviously hanging out with the <laughs> hanging out with the homies, Pete, Alicia, uh, Tracy, Josh, Aunt Tracy, Uncle Josh. Sorry, <laughs> for those you don't know. Um, it's fun experiencing the event with uh, not necessarily siblings, obviously, you know, cousins. But to us, they're they're baby cousins because they're so much younger than us. But uh, it's really cool to kind of experience it with a whole bunch of people, a whole range of ages, and it's it's great. And um, Insidious is fucking incredible. So if you haven't <laughs> done it yet, please please go to do Insidious. Um, I was, I know this isn't a ranking episode. We're not going to get into it. I know we're probably going to talk about some of the house reactions, but I just initially have to say that house is even, as of right now, it's in first, and there's not a close second for me. Yeah, and that's that also helps. hyperbole. You know, everyone I know, everyone online is 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 talking it, is singing its praises, uh, but I can definitely like tell you for for a fact that house is worth every ounce of praise that it's getting. So, yeah. um, I mean, I think I think I think it was Xandra that mentioned, or sorry if, if it was if it was Brandon or somebody else, but they mentioned that like it's the like it feels like old HHN for the first time in a long time. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. I obviously don't really know what old HHN is because I've only been going since 2019, 29. Scary. Um, <laughs> right. But if it if it has anything similar to going to Spooky World, you know, yeah. back in the day or going to Witch's Woods back in the day when Witch's Woods was still pretty hardcore or doing some of the other more local haunts that I used to do back in New England um, where they kind of, you know, they, they have a little more leeway to go a lot harder, um, you know, if, if 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 insidious is any gauge or um any distinction to what that used to be like then i can totally see where everybody comes from when they say hhn has gotten weak mm-hmm. <laughs> over the last few years because yeah. this house goes hard um so if, if you're a scare actor working in it too and you're listening to us you guys are awesome keep up the good work because for opening weekend you know i can only imagine how much better this house is going to get throughout the season so oh i know i'm mm-hmm. super excited to, to do it again and i haven't done quiet place yet it's the only one i haven't done yet so we obviously can't rank the houses because i still haven't done one of them but yeah that was my weekend um can't wait to get back out there and see some of y'all again and do, do this do this some more mm-hmm. so let's get into i guess uh, probably the i say it and it, it sounds negative but 
kind of the most boring stuff that we we should talk about before we get into like the scare zones and and houses but like food and beverage like stuff that we may have tried this weekend i know i had i had the i had a decent amount of stuff so i had the turkey wing me too yeah um turkey wing was good it was you didn't have the turkey wing did you no, I'm saying I tried a good amount of stuff this weekend too. Oh, okay. All right. I was like, you can't eat turkey. <laughs> Definitely um, did not eat the turkey wing. <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, for the price point, it's good. If you're looking on YouTube, it's like uh, this big. It thing is mm-hmm. a good size for what you're getting. Downfall is it is super, super messy. It is impossible. Um, I was catching every pit of barbecue sauce in this old soup strainer I got rocking right now. Mm-hmm. But it was it, it maybe it might have to be a fork and knife style. A uh, food item that I get if I am, am to get it again. I tried the pumpkin guts, which maybe I'm not remembering it correctly from the last time, but I think it was different. This is like a big, like almost half carved out boat of like zucchini with the noodles and stuff inside. I don't remember if previously it was like that big, uh, but very good. I, I enjoyed mm-hmm. that. I had the burger from the triplets booth which was fine. Um, it was slider style. It was very, it was smaller than I thought just because of the other burgers of previous years were more like burger burger. Um, but it, it was good. It, it wasn't anything like wacky again. Like it wasn't like that good guy mm-hmm. burger or whatever. It didn't have like red frosting and like donut shit all over it, but it was still good. It was very enjoyable still. Um, I've been trying to get to that goddamn carry drive in food booth, but the line is always, like back to ET. It's just insane. And it doesn't I move. I can't do it. I can't Two do it. Two different times I waited in line for five to like eight minutes and I didn't move up one person. I was like, all yeah. right, this is just not yeah. happening because I'm not I'm not devoting forty five minutes to get this hot dog. Like I will I will get it at some point. I don't need to do it right now. Right. Um what else did I have? You had the oh, chowder. Had the chowder. I had the chowder with no shrimp, so you can get mm-hmm. it with no shrimp because it is just mm-hmm. added after. Very good. Uh, it's not as thick as like a typical chowder. It's it's, it's soupy almost. Kind of like a bisque, I feel Yeah, like. not in a bad way. It's just not no. like mm-hmm. full thick chowdery. Um, what else did we try? Oh, we tried the baked beans and the mashed potatoes. That was good. Oof, uh, those they're were very, good. They are good. <laughs> they were um, really good. I don't know if it's anything like crazy. It's a simple dish, but it was good. Yeah. It was very like warm and like homey. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. it was good. It, it, that's what it is. It's good. It's a, it's about as good as uh, baked beans and mashed potatoes can be. Right <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just what it, it is. What it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to destroy one of the marshmallow men s'mores. I uh, fucked did. them up real good. Got me back a little bit too because I had a sticky marshmallow face for a little bit after that. <laughs> oh man, what else? Why don't you? Why don't, why don't you go over some stuff you had, and I'll think just to make sure that I got everything that I tried. What else did you guys try this weekend? something different um i tried the oh. the red door hand pie the insidious red door hand pie when i was at the media what event. Did you, actually, you tried that was it good mm, maybe it was just the one that i had gotten but it was very doughy like oh, very really? like the dough was kind of like pop tart doughy tasting i guess like the phyllo dough i don't know it wasn't like bad but like once you got into the middle it was like the filling was good but i just felt like it was very doughy for me um, I tried the corn chowder too with the shrimp. I enjoyed it too. I thought it was pretty good. It was a little bit thinner than like a chowder though, but I didn't mind it either. We tried the baked beans. I'm trying to think of different stuff that I tried that you didn't try. Um, well, I had that massive Korean hot dog from oh, Ghostbusters. Oh, you did. How was it? It was good, right? You liked it? It was, it was, it was surprisingly, like yeah, it was good. Did I, it have I, a hot I, dog I, in it or no? Oh, I did. The nice oh. thing about it is the hot dog is actually cut up. It's not just one long hot dog like on a oh, stick. It's like nice, hot dog chunks on a stick. So they kind of it makes it easier slightly to eat because when you, I mean, no joke, this thing is massive. Mm-hmm. Um, so like the one thing about their food portions, at least this season, have been. I don't know if maybe I'm misremembering things, but like I feel like they've been a lot more um, liberal with their portions I this think year. So too. I don't think they're as stingy about giving you food. I mean, for what you pay for, like I think I paid like nine or ten bucks for that hot dog, and it's massive. It's a, it, it's a big big hot dog. Now a lot of it is batter and cheese, so if you're cool with that, like that you're gonna get a ton of batter and cheese. But you know, it is still well made. It doesn't taste funky. Um, the bugle, I think there are bugles on the outside of it because the yeah. other one, the cheesecake one, has bugles on it. 
Uh, it doesn't, it, 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 it isn't really that dry. And I think the cheese inside helps that a little bit. Um, but it is, it is really filling. I couldn't finish it. Um, I had most of it, but <laughs> I got to a point where I was like, I'm going to die if I don't stop <laughs> eating this. Um, but it was good. It was, it, I, I would, I may or may not do it again. Um, just because it's a lot of, it's a lot of cheese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you also had that um, dish from the Monstros bar, right? The pork. Oh, yes, I did. The uh, pork. Um, kind of seria? Carnitas, kind of seria, something like that. Kind of seria, something like that. Um, so I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. I know but, so. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that's, that actually, if you're looking for like, I don't want to say like different, because like it's, it's a lot of the same that we've had in the past, but at the same time, it's, it's really, really good. Um, and it's kind of a lighter option. Obviously it's meat. So if you're not a, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, it's not going to work for you. But, um, if you're into like pork dishes and you like a, you like a spicy kick, this is a pretty good one, a good one to try. Cause again, for the price, you get a, a ton of food. Um, and it's pretty, it, you know, it was, it was pretty good. So again, out of the two, I, I actually prefer something like that, but, um, yeah, that one was pretty good. I do want to go back there because I didn't get to have the other, the chicken item that they have there that, that looks really good too. But I like spicy food. So, and even if my stomach disagrees with that, <laughs> I am going to force it to like it because I like it. But um, yeah, that one was pretty good too. I think I tried some dessert stuff. I tried the chocolate chili macaroon with uh, Major Sweet's little face on it. That was pretty tasty. Didn't really have a strong chocolate or chili taste to it, but. Um, I don't think – no. I was going to try the little wooden board eclair, but I didn't try it because I heard it was actually very spicy. Uh, I don't think, know if I tried anything else different. Oh, <laughs> well, it wasn't really Horror Nights food, but if you find yourself stuck at the Ghostbusters booth, all the food lines are full. You don't know where to go. You want to get something tasty. The little <laughs> food stand across from the mummy where they have the Coca-Cola freestyle machine and those little like food kiosks they have for Horror Nights, um, street corn like riblets. They're like little street corn that looks like little ribs. And then they have these like little Colombian cheese bread things. And there was like no line and it was actually really, really good. So that's a good little spot if you want to get something and all the lines are really long. But other than that, I still really want to try the um, the stuff from the Carrie Drive-In. Obviously, everything looks super cool. Yeah, that's where I the jalapeno wanna... rocks are and the walking tacos, The too. lumps of coal and the walking tacos, I know. And then at the Triplets of Terror, that little trio dessert tray that they got, I want to try that, too. With, like, the bubblegum mousse, like, balloon and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I gotta try that out. I mean, we definitely yeah. we, we've tried a lot already, but I think, there's still I I was gonna a say, lot to be did. uncovered. Yeah, mm -hmm. we definitely definitely put our put a dent in some of the food. While we're talking about food and stuff, though, I guess we could kind of like talk about drinks too. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. already mentioned it earlier. I just have to say that that light bulb drink from a quiet place. I'm so sorry, but it was absolutely horrible, <laughs> horrible. I'm not a huge bourbon fan to begin with, but I was like, you know what? I'll expand my taste buds, try something different. And I really just wanted the light bulb because it was pretty cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, I ended up pouring like half of it out because I even asked Nick if he wanted it. And he said it was awful too, which is a lot coming from Nick because he's a big like bourbon drinker <laughs> yeah. and whiskey yeah, drinker. Yeah, I like so. bourbon and it was, it tastes like Robitussin. They it just looks like, like Robitussin and it tastes like Robitussin. It's called yeah, Robitussin. They chilled it, but they like poured it into the bulb like, without any ice cubes or like without chilling the light bulb or anything. So it was just really warm and really tough to drink in a 92 degree weather at 10 o'clock at night. So we didn't like that very much. Although they did bring back the high noons to the event since they don't have my friggin' ciders anymore. So at least they gave me something at least. <laughs> I think on Saturday night on the RIP tour, Brennan got, I don't know if it, I don't know where it is, but it was like, an, it's like an espresso margarita. Oh, they had that at the Quiet Place too, I think. Yeah. Or no, um, maybe not. no, maybe it wasn't the Quiet Place actually. Because I think someone sure. pointed th it out the other night. It's somewhere, um, but yeah. wherever it is, it should fucking stay there because it was. Eek. It was gross. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. good. I, I just no. Uh, espresso martinis are good. Espresso tequila. Espresso margarita is a little <laughs> questionable. I it just had a lot of weird tastes going on in that thing. I don't know. I. I I, every year I want to try more and more cocktails from, 
from Horror Nights, and then I I try a couple, and I'm like, this, this is why, why I, I stick to beer because it's just not amazing. Although at the Dead Coconut Club, I did try the Blood Moon Punch. That was really tasty. I wish they had that and, inside the event because that was super good. And they're more a bar, so like they their stuff is pretty good. Because I have like the, whatever right. it is, like the ele- electric lemonade or something. One mm-hmm. night be- the night before, and then I had a the one with the eyeball in it the second night, and there was those were good, but oh, they're yeah, the definitely one. more pretty, yeah. bar oriented over there. So like mm-hmm. I would hope they do it well. And not mm-hmm. in while we're on it, I guess you know Dead Coconut Club, super super cool vibe there. Go super go stop cool. in there if you can. Uh, really make the time to go there. Never been because we'll ever. we'll definitely be there more often during this event because mm-hmm. it's just a fun a fun little hangout before the event. You know, mm-hmm. if you're cutting it close to stay and scream or if it's raining like w- we did, just hightail it up to the escalators, get into the dead coconut, and just kind of wait for the doors to open and then mosey on over. And it wasn't even that busy in there for like how bad the rain was too, and how pretty busy opening night or not opening night. I'm sorry, Sunday night was so definitely yeah, a cool little. Hangout spot. It's still, I don't want to say it's hidden, but I do feel like, especially when it's raining, people might just hold off on going in in general mm-hmm. versus just kind of like dealing with yeah. the rain for, you know, five seconds to run mm-hmm. over there. But so let's, um, we talked about food and beverage. I, the show, I think I'm the only one that's seen the show. Mm-hmm. So I can quickly talk on that. It definitely felt, it's different. It definitely is different this year. It felt less sexy. Which is funny because they use the term sexy in the I was disappointed. like in the announcement. They say like this instead of instead of saying uh, adult in nature, which I think they used the last three years, they said uh, like images that are sexy. They like had the pause and like the crowd <laughs> cheered and they got all hyped up for that. Um, but it's a little less sexy. They're not in like the bondage gear. It's kind of like little clown outfits. It felt more like ballet like there was still some intensity in the dancing but it did it felt slower at times there was still magic jamie so you'll be excited when we go check it out so you get to see your magic still um, but overall it was magic. good I, I it's it's just i feel like the show still has such a following year in and year out now that i, I hope every time we go it's not that hard to get a spot because you see people waiting for like 45 minutes lined up before that show starts and I'm just not mm-hmm. going to devote that time unless it's like super crazy night. But usually when we do catch the show, if we're walking by like 10 minutes before the show and they're still letting people in, we'll like sneak in as like the last yeah. couple people, but I'm not going to devote 45 minutes to 30 minutes to an hour waiting outside for the show just to start. So we'll see how if, the year goes. I wonder if now, since there's a new show, maybe if we were ever to meet one of the fuel girls or someone, they can tell me how they do the magic disappearing bed. <laughs> Cause I have to know. <laughs> I don't think they will be able to tell you. Damn I don't it. think they can spoil the, the magic. <laughs> Who does it? <laughs> um, so that's the show uh, scare zones. Let's get into this because this is very divisive. Mm-hmm. They say online, there's five scare zones. Do you guys agree that there are five scare zones at this event? No. <laughs> No, I don't. Unfortunately, as of right now, no. How many scare zones do you think we have? Three. That's where I'm at. I would, I would say four, give or take. But I mean, I, <laughs> that's I, just I, me being nice because <laughs> I didn't want to. It's I can't, no, I mean, I can't hate on it. We'll just. Uh, I'm just gonna come out right and say it. As of right now, they're dropping the ball in the Blumhouse zone. Yeah. Ugh. Um. It feels incredibly empty. Like, and I don't know if that's just because they don't have a full staff yet, and maybe they're kind of working on getting more staff. But it just feels so empty. The whole middle of it, the whole middle part of it, is just nothing there. It's like you've got the, th- the the four stages, and you get some people walking, a couple characters walking you through, but there's nothing going on. There's no music. There's no. It it, it just feels like hey, let's throw some stuff together and put those guys out there. And I think a lot of people had this had this worry when they went into it, announcing it. And I was the one giving it a chance and be like, yeah, maybe, maybe they'll find a way to make this fun. But they yeah, have not too. found a way it's to make okay. it fun as of right now. Yeah, like so. the characters that are there now are great. I just want, like I was expecting some set pieces or well, something kind of like that, you know? It's tough for me to say this, but I think Megan's the best part of that zone as of right now. Because for one, the 
actors that they have playing her are incredible. They look just like her and, you know, it, and she's really good. And, and or that's actually she, they are really good at um, doing, you know, some of the stage work or whatever you want to call it. Um, they're really good at working in the crowd. Uh, I, I don't hate the grabber. I like how they change him up a little bit. Everyone's like a little different. I think that's kind of cool. Um, but again, I don't know. I just, they need to figure something out because it's just, it's not, it's not very, it's not like, very entertaining. It's just not just, an entertaining zone. I just don't way. get how, like, why, why couldn't you have put the van from black phone and have the grabber by that, you know, like set pieces that associate the balloons, with the characters. like, like yeah. why couldn't have you given like some cage or something like that for the purge characters to kind of interact, like, yeah. besides just walking around give them an environment to work with you know like the up front on the back that that little corner i mean we have the black phone prop and like that's like a step in the direction that i'm leaning towards like wh why can't we have props not necessarily small props but like um set pieces for mm -hmm. the characters that are designed to each one i mean they had the black phone house two years ago like i maybe they did something with that car and I know it was only like really half a car, but like you could do the same thing. You could put that car up against a wall, even if it's half of it and have the trunk, you know, the back open and that's where the grabber can kind of interact with people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I just thought that maybe there would be a way to interact with that a little bit more, but yeah, I think, I think that one dropped the ball. So let's talk to about the other scare zone that we think is not a scare zone. Duality of fear. It's, it's there's I'm no sorry, path but that's just, to either way. There's no path to either way, exactly like I said, and I don't know why they hyped it up to make it seem like it was going to be paths. I'm not hating on it. It's just kind of disappointing. I mean, I figured it was going to be similar to that, but I mean, looking at it now, like the Odd Fellow scare zone that they had there in the front had more like prop work and different stuff than this did. All I've seen is Sinister and Surreal and then a couple chainsaw guys. <laughs> And chainsaw people running around. That's that's about it. And I wish it was like, even if they just like interacted more and like pointed you to a way or like led you to a way or just had like some sort of like pathway to depict a difference in the scare zones that you're going to. But I know it's hard since Torture Fair starts all the way at the end once you enter the park and then Demon Queens, you kind of got to go in past the Hello Kitty store and then you're starting right there at the entrance to Hollywood. So I see it, but I feel I just wish they would have done a little something more with it because it's a cool concept, but it just didn't really get executed that well. Yeah, I just don't mm. get what I just don't get what what is so hard about having like the right side have like this blue purpley surrealist style light, even have light the, yep. uh, have the mm. other way have like that orangey red style light. You have sinister on that side. You have surreal on the other side. And you have little minions in between, like that's really all you needed to do to really step this up. And it really is a shame that the, the idea on paper before we went into this event seemed like it could have been something pretty cool. Uh, we all sort of downplayed it a little bit just because we kind of knew we kind of saw this coming based off of the all the previous years up in that area that they've sort of waved the white flag and abandoned it, which is a shame because. They had the opportunity right there. You have two paths. You have two icons. You only had to dress it up a little bit, and it would have would have been like passable as a scare zone. But just simply having the Halloween Horror Nights truss up there is just like not enough. Like that's mm -hmm. even the bottoms of the trusses. Like we, those used to be sort of decorated as well, and it's like just so blatantly nothing. It just feels so bare. Yeah. They have like a couple it's, like it's tapestries a of like the colors and that's about it that I noticed. Yeah, it's it's just a letdown, you know, it it, it, would, it could have been something. Yeah, I'm not going to say if they did that with the lights in the two directions, I'm not going to be on here being like it's the best zone of the event, mm -hmm. but it would have just been a little bit better than nothing, you know, which is unfortunately kind of what we got. But Seamus, thoughts on that duality of fear? Yeah, I mean... I complete agreement. Um, it is a little fun. It, it's it's weird to have made a big deal about these two characters and the scare zone incorporating them in 
in a way that makes you feel almost like you have some sort of, you know, push and pull about, you know, which way do you want to go and, and whose side are you taking and this, that, you know, and the other. And, and not that I was expecting a whole lot. I think like Jamie said, I, I don't think there was a whole lot of, a lot there to really expect some massive surprise, but I don't think I suspected this. Like this, it's literally nothing. It's just the two of them standing on top of the entrance lay talking to people, and that's fine. Um, I mean, it's kind of cool that they are interacting with the crowd, but at the same time, like it, it's weak. It's really weak. And at this point, you might as well just leave it like that and say we're getting four scare zones. Don't yeah. tell us you're getting five scare zones, and then just do that, and then have four scare zones. Um, you know, throughout the park, which one of which is not very good as of right now. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm less disappointed just because I kind of expected this to be nothing and it is basically nothing. And it's a shame because I feel like those characters are really cool and they should be in the crowd up close interacting with people, not standing on top of the truss, you know, 10, 15 feet in the air talking on microphones. Yeah. Yeah. And they are like, I think, yeah, they are scattered in the other zones, zones, I think, but not in like, I I just, I I wanted them up front in in duality fear being like one. No, but if you're talking between this and what we got last year with, with, um, odd fellow, I'd take what we got last year. At least last year, it felt like there was more of a scare zone. I wish they had done more with it, but at least it was more of a scare zone. This feels like pumpkin Lord minus the big pumpkin. Yeah. Cause even that that was a letdown too. Like that was, you know, absurd. So so I think they've sort of abandoned that a little bit. So scare zones we can briefly touch on because I, I, we, we haven't really, we've spent a lot of time crushing houses this week. So let's go to the one that we've probably done the least being Demon Queens. Um, Jamie, what do you think of Demon Queens this year? A little Hollywood Boulevard area. I actually kind of like it. I think it's pretty cool. I don't think it has, well, maybe, did they do an episode on the podcast thing for Demon Queens? I don't think so. I don't think they did. Okay, good. Because that, kind of justifies my point a little bit more that i feel like it doesn't really have a story behind it maybe it's just supposed to be uh surreal's different minions or creatures kind of something like that Mm -hmm. the costuming looks great all of the um scare actors in the zone look great i really love their um like cloaks and like clothing that they wear specifically because it has it all really like in the purple and like blue lights that they have in that zone, you can really see all the sparkles and different sparklies on it. So I kind of, I don't know. I thought that was just a nice touch. The costuming looks really nice. But um, one thing I did notice, I stood at the end of the zone on opening night for a little bit um, when we were with media and we were watching some of uh, the scare actors. And at certain points throughout the night, I the like music that they're playing over the speakers in the zone will kind of like go static and everyone in the zone kind of like stops and like grabs their ears and like grabs their head and kind of like does this big like gathering get together thing. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I want to stand there and see it more because I kind of got the end half of it, but I thought that was really cool. I thought it was a little more interactive than we've seen from some of the other zones this year. So I thought that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Seamus thoughts on demon Queens. I think it's better lit than that zone typically is. So mm-hmm. that's a plus. Um, you can I actually kind colors. of see what's going on. It's very colorful. Um, I like the black light effect. Uh, and the characters all look really good. Um, they're very different. They're not, you know, a lot of the same thing. Like a lot, they're very unique in their lots own to way. Look at, which is nice. Lots to look at. Um, I would like to spend a little bit more time in it. Can kind of take in maybe some more of the specific scare actors. Like I want to see what the each demon queen looks like in more detail. I think we the last couple of times that I went, I didn't spend a ton of time in it. I just kind of shot through one direction or the other. So I want to take some time to actually maybe appreciate it a little bit more. And typically we can do that, especially when we're taking photos or, or doing you know mm-hmm. things like that within the scare zones. So it'll it, it'll come. But as of right now, I. I, I do enjoy it. I think it's a pretty, you know, specific, you know, maybe not like anything we haven't seen before, but at least the costuming is unique enough that it's interesting to kind of spend some time and, and check it out. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I like it as of right now. And they kept the, they kept the chances out of there, at least they for the did. time being. So, mm-hmm. so thankfully that's, that, that's the case. That's yeah, a win. I like Demon Queens. It seems like they shortened this zone, which 
I think works in their benefit in the mm-hmm. fact that it it condenses everything so it seems like it's more full of actors and actresses. Yes. So I, I do like that aspect of it. I, I think it's fine. I like the set pieces. I like the characters. Uh, everything, like you said, I just got to spend more time in there because these are very quick observations. But overall, mm-hmm. I, I, I enjoy it. I think it's a fun zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, Swamp of the Undead. What do you guys think on that, Seamus? What do you think on the Swamp of the Undead this year? Uh, I am pleasantly surprised with it. I think that they're, as of right now, handling that zone exactly how it should be handled. They're not pumping in a ton of fog, which last year there was that was a problem. This year, it doesn't seem like that's as big a problem right now. I mean, this could change, obviously. So, you know, it could just be maybe the fog machines aren't working as well right now. But either way, it, I, do en- I do enjoy this zone. I think it's unique in a lot of ways it's not just zombies um there's a lot to look at when it comes to the different set pieces uh i, I really dig the airboat set piece in it i think that's really cool and oh, and, 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 and different there's an alligator so find the <laughs> alligator that's really cool too being from florida um you know obviously gators are a big thing here so it's mm-hmm. it's it's kind of fun 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 to see the stuff that they have in it but um overall pretty generic in, in, in a lot of ways, at least with the costuming, it doesn't really scream unique, but you can only do so much with zombies to begin with. So I don't really fault them for it. And they tried their best. And I think it looks really good. And it's utilizing that uh, San Francisco, not um, Central Park area really well. So, Have you guys seen Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island? Uh, not in a long time. They but were I know like it is. they were like at this estate, this mansion, and it was like in the Louisiana Bayou, all this kind of stuff. Well, the zombies from that movie look exactly like the ones in <laughs> Swamp of the Undead, just with like their outfits and stuff like that. And I gotta say, we're only three days into the event, but I really think this scare zone's growing on me. I feel like this is a very even though, like I said, it's supposed to be Louisiana Bayou, I feel like it's definitely giving me strong, like Florida Everglades vibes. And Seamus, with the no fog being there, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to pay attention tomorrow night when we go. I think they have been doing the fog machines very low to the ground. And I think they want to get that mist effect because when you're walking through the zone two, it's always very like moist and like wet on the ground which kind of helps enhance that swampy effect and i like that so i don't know if they've had like (laughs) the sprinklers going at night to kind of give it that little extra oomph or if it's been the fog machines being low and making the precipitation kind of low but either way i'm I'm enjoying i'm enjoying it excellent use of the word moist um but yeah (laughs) i agree yeah i I like it i'm glad we can see the set pieces in it it's very fun there's little nooks and crannies for the characters to actually Mm -hmm. scare you still which is fun uh, there are misters, so I do I do like that very swampy feel. I think they, mm-hmm. I, if if everything stays the same in this zone, it's kind of accomplished what it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. So I hope that they kind of keep the train rolling. Now let's get to the biggest scare zone, mm-hmm. Torture Fair. Literally. Torture Fair. Torture what do we think fair. on Torture Fair? I am. I'm not reserving judgment mm-hmm. because I think this I think this scare zone. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Again. You, Jamie and I agree. I think I think we're, I'm not I'm not ready to say that I like it or I dislike it yet because I don't think I've spent enough time in it. Um, this opening weekend, obviously, it's you got to take everything with a grain of salt because it is really busy. So on nights where it's not going to be as busy, like during the week um, or you know off off holiday weekends and stuff like that, I think with less people milling about, it'll be more enjoyable mm-hmm. um and uh and, and since i started talking i'll bring it up you know because you guys are going to agree with me why do we have the sawhorses <laughs> in the middle of the scare zone i don't understand what they're there like what are they there for what are sawhorses and, oh sorry the I don't know how to describe it. The little like wooden the divider like, kind of thing. The like the wooden barriers. Things? Yeah, <laughs> the, the like hurdles. Yeah, oh, sorry. It's a, it's a, I'm it's just I'm calling New them England. hurdles. Sorry. It's oh, a New okay. England thing, I guess. Ah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but <laughs> either the... way, either way, what are they there for? <laughs> and I would love for some. <laughs> I would love for someone to explain that to me. Like, what? What are they? What? What? What's? What purpose are these serving? They just have little shields on them. Are you trying to control traffic? Because you're doing a very poor mm-hmm. job of doing that, if that's the case. Because it literally, like, the, the the floats and stuff and the different, like, stages that are kind of, like, in the middle of the scare zone, 
combine that with those stupid barriers and it's hard to like maneuver around things. So I don't know, unless you know something that I don't know. I just I, think I it's, just, go ahead, Seamus. Sorry. No, 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 no. I mean, please. I mean, if you know more than I do. No, I <laughs> don't. I don't. Because... I, was, I just found out what a sawhorse is. I was just going to tell Nick the other night he had set it in the zone. He's like, I don't know why they have the sawhorses. And all I heard was horses. And I was like, what did he see? I was like, where did he see horses in the zone? I was like, maybe like the dead one that they had in uh, Monsters last year. I was like, I didn't. I was like, I don't know why he's so upset about it. They but, sawed a horse in half? That's what I, yeah, that's definitely what I thought you meant. But that's okay. <laughs> I'm very, uh, very gullible, I guess. <laughs> but I don't know why they're there too. I guess it kind of reminds me of like Ren Faire, like games, maybe like Renaissance games, like that kind of thing. I guess so, but I, I guess- still feel like it's. It's it's just it's blocking it's impeding traffic. But they don't have anyone doing. hurtling over them, so I don't really know. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know why they're there, and I don't want to say that it's completely taking away from the zone for me, but it it doesn't help. Yeah. Um, because it does feel congested in there, and it's really hard. And it's it that honestly, in an in in and of itself, is an accomplishment to make that area of the theme park feel congested because it's so open and big. The fact that they managed to do that with the scare zone is, I guess, a testament to their ability to shove shit in one location. But at the same time, um, I think the set pieces, the stage work, it all it all looks really good. It's done well, but I don't have I don't know if I've spent enough time really experiencing it to make a final judgment yet. Yeah, no, it's still early and I I still haven't like watched the show or like me. Either. We, we've kind of just gone through in passing, so I, I, we really can't can't judge anything you know house zone whatever but yeah i I enjoy it but again i the traffic in there is a little weird and the sawhorses don't help but overall i like it the costumes are cool the actors are doing their thing the stage show from what i've seen looks pretty cool uh, sinister walking around and like with a hot mic like talking to people is nice little um addition to the zone so i enjoyed that i i'm looking forward to spending more time in here but jamie what do you think on on torture fair I was going to say, I really like the costume with the the person wearing the big, like, triangle-shaped, like, headpiece. It really reminds me of Silent Hill. Really like that one. Yeah. They have another one that I only saw once so far, but it was a scare actor, and they kind of had one of those little, like, I don't know what they're called, but, like, you put your head through it, and they would put their hands in it, and you kind of, like, hang there that they had yeah. back in the old days or whatever, but carrying it around, and I was looking, and the, the hands that they have inside of it are fake. Which is kind of cool that I thought because I was like, man, I was like, they got to be, they got to be exhausted walking around with that thing on them. And I was like, oh, it's fake at the top. So I thought that was a fun little, fun little Easter egg kind of thing to notice a little behind the, behind the magic. But I enjoy it. Like I said, I'm not really hooked on it yet. I want to spend some more time in it. I just feel like it's so tough because last year when we had Vamp there, I just feel like I was so excited to spend time there and I did spend a lot of time there. And I feel like I'm not really getting, like that vibe like I got I, obviously it's two different kind of things but just not getting that same feeling as I had gotten last year but maybe it'll grow it's still early it's only a couple of days and we're not even a full week through so we'll yeah. see no, no, it's it's definitely time to grow so all mm-hmm. right let's get into houses we obviously don't have to go crazy in depth we've already been yapping for about an hour but we yeah. obviously <laughs> have to hit on the houses a little bit mm-hmm. so let's just quickly run through these maybe um maybe we each just handle one and then if you have any thoughts other than what that mm-hmm. person covered you can kind of chime in so that way we don't have to give like everybody's opinions on all of these yet and then yeah. that way Seamus like hasn't done a quiet place so we don't mm-hmm. it doesn't you know like we don't have to really talk too much on all that stuff yet so yeah. I was going to say I could start off because I feel like this one, we don't have to harp on it too much because I feel like we all kind of feel the same about it. Uh, Museum Deadly Exhibits. Yeah. Not a huge fan, unfortunately. Probably my least favorite house of the year. I feel like it was very... I know you guys were... I know, Nick, you were at least looking forward to this one a little bit, but after doing it and doing a couple runs of it, I just... It's lacking. I feel like the start of it, had me a little bit. Seemed pretty interesting. There's a lot going on um, with the set design, the different like characters that they had. And then I feel like it just kind of emptied out and it was just really not much going on. And it was the same. It was a little repetitive towards the end as well. So unfortunately, I feel like there's not too, too much to say about this one. I know it's so early for this same as well, but I feel like even with when we had Darkest Deal last year, like that may not have been our favorite house to begin with, but the first couple of runs we did, but it had that potential and I knew it had the potential. And I feel like with this, 
not to say I don't want to think it's going to get better, but just because it's something I'm personally not that interested in, I just don't think it's going to really do a little bit better for me. Yeah, the the only other thought I'd add, I, I, a comparison that I found myself making was <laughs> it's sort of like Slaughter Cinema where like each room is kind of its own thing, but Slaughter, you like definitively know what you're walking into. It has the announcement. You can see the poster. Whereas mm-hmm. museum, each sort of little room is like a different, um, whether it's artifact or whatever, but mm-hmm. you don't have enough time to like really read the inscription of the sign as you're walking in. So like, it's hard to really differentiate what, what you're looking at. So I'm hoping over even, time yeah. I'll figure the feel of it out a little bit more, but Seamus, I know mm-hmm. you were a little bit more excited for this house than, than we were, but so where, where do you stand on the museum? Um, I only did it once, so I guess I really can't say that I'm down on it yet. I, I, I can see where people are, 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 are down on it. Like I get why people are, are down on it, but I'm having a hard time, like just immediately thinking it's terrible. Cause it's, I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, I, don't, um, I don't think it's terrible. I, I think that it, it does, doesn't do a great job of explaining what's going on. Um, there's very little, it's very little to go on or understand like what is happening. Like, why is this happening? Um, I think the house itself looks really, really good. But for me, it's the story. I don't, it's kind of like with monsters, legends collide in the sense that like, I don't really don't, I have no idea what's going on. All I know is I'm in a museum and things are coming to life, but there's really very little explanation as to why it's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to be good at visually explaining things in, a, in, a, in an attraction like this. And they're just not doing it right now. So I'm hoping that it gets better, hoping the runs improve as the year goes by. But I guess we'll have to find out and see. Yeah. So let's just move from that portion of the park and kind of keep moving around almost counterclockwise. So Seamus, why don't you hit on its neighboring house? Because this was the first house you did. And I th- think it was the last house we did on Sunday. Slaughter Cinema 2. Uh, I think it's, as of right now, it's it's hit everything it needs to hit. I think it's 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 great. It's not my favorite house as of right now, but it's a close second. Well, I don't want to say close second because I, I just went on a tangent. <laughs> when we started about how it, there isn't a close second. So <laughs> it's not a close second, but it is definitely in second uh, as of right now in my list. Uh, it was my number one hyped house as, you know, I think warranted because this house is incredible. It's everything that I expected it to be. And I had never done the first one. So I think that might color my opinion somewhat, but at the same time, I've talked to people that have done the first one and they're saying this one is as good as, you know, the original and it's living up to that, to that, um, to that standard. So I, I, I like this house without going into a million details. I think all of the separate movies are great. I don't think there's a, I don't think it's a miss at all when it comes to all the different movies. Uh, I was worried that maybe one or two would be kind of weak. Um, maybe the weakest is the Christmas one for me, but I love it's, that still one. Pretty, it's still pretty still pretty good. Else. Right. I feel and like, that's what I feel like, like we'll is, all like, have different weak ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but again, Blood when I say but when I say weak, I mean like like it's still good. Like that's the, mm-hmm. the yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's not yeah. like so I yeah, I like I think this house is is, is great. I, I love it and I can't wait to do it again. So, yeah, so you say, so like right now your least favorite in that is the Kringles? Is the Kringle one, yeah. But Jamie, what's yours? Blood and Chum. So my mine is the... Oh, uh, see, I love that one. The, mine's it's the, just uh, got the shark in it. Yeah, but it's incredible, though. That it shark is, cool. is insane. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's yours? It's the, best, it's the best puppet they've got in all the houses right now. Yeah. I know what a yours is going to be. What is it? There's two different is? options of two different things are going to be. It's either going to be the Zyborgs or... Clowns of the Undead or something. Uh, Well, now that I, 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 Clowns of the Undead. Yeah. (laughs) I was going to say Zyborgs, but I honestly forgot about Clowns of the Undead. Um, (laughs) I knew it. Because that room is like literally just like like a little grave site and that's it. Yeah. Zyborgs is cool. My favorite, I forget the name of it, but it's like the Western one where like the 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 devil's like demon hunters. I love the scares in that one. They have the, um, I think that's, that's got the, the bungee cord scare in it, I think. It's the um, pull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yep. got like it's a pull. pull one. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's a pull cool. thing. That 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 room is really cool. I'm um, pretty effective. So yeah, I, I again Slaughter Cinema 2. I think we all expected it to be good. Maybe Nick and I a little bit more so than Jamie, but I think she would agree that 
she had high oh, hopes I for love it. it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of so glad. Go ahead, Seamus. I'll let you finish. I'm sorry. No, no it's, I just, yeah, I was just gonna say, I think it's a great house. I think it's worth it. I just wanted to add to that. I've seen, I'm glad you've seen good reception because I've seen other people saying that they didn't think this really compared to the original Slaughter Cinema, which kind of made me not happy in a sense that I didn't get to do the first one because I have watched a bunch of walkthroughs. So I know like all the scenes and films that were in the first house. And I did think a lot of them were cool, but I thought these were really good ones too. And I had a lot of fun in this house. So I feel like maybe if I would have done the original, it maybe I wouldn't have liked this one as much or thought it was as cool because this is my first time actually seeing a slaughter yeah. cinema. So maybe that's why I enjoy it more. But I still really liked it. I thought it was super fun. The Mardi Gras murders ended up being super cool. I love that yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all they're all very well well done. I think I, I do think I do think it is hard to compare because Slaughter Cinema kind of came out of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. At that point, it was unprecedented. So when you saw it that first time, it was like, wow, this mm -hmm. one like comes in almost almost uh, at a disadvantage because it's it really can't accomplish that initial wow because you know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. So I I, th I think personally, if Slaughter Cinema two came out as slaughter cinema one people would have maybe that affinity towards the, the house we got this year if it was at 28 and exactly this, and 28s mm -hmm. was at this year just because it was so special and so so distinctly different at the time because I, I do think they are very comparable I, I love both of them i really mm -hmm. did so um let's move over to those new tents now then Universal mm -hmm. Monsters, Eternal Bloodlines. I guess I'll I'll handle this Those one. Those tents, by the way, are incredible. Like huge. I love that so setup. They're, they're massive. They I think are. that's a smart move. Yeah. I, I, honestly, honestly, without getting into the houses yet, I think that they're comp not obviously not comparable, but still, I mean, you can get a comparable effect out of those um, as you can in a stage in, in, a, in, a, in a full stage because they're so big. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't expect them to be that that size. So. Good they're on huge. Universal for doing them. They're, they are a great, a great addition. So sorry, yeah. continue. And I would say I'm, I'm just really glad that they they chose the smart way of having us enter to two houses and being able to do those yeah. two versus yep. having to walk all the way out, walk all the way back in. I think Agreed. that's a very smart move. Yeah, Putting the, a bathroom the, down there. The, in stuff. general, traffic flow outside of the scare zones is really good this year when it comes to lines and stuff, I think. Like there's still lines, but where you exit and enter is a lot more congruent <laughs> to where, yeah. you know, cause you can go from one to the next and it's, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so much easier. So yes, a plus so far for that. Yeah. Um, Universal monsters, eternal bloodline. So I don't know, obviously everything we're saying on this episode, um, grain of salt because it's opening weekend. We're still filling holes. People are still getting their roles. So you can't expect perfect runs. However, I did feel like, in this house, there was a lot of holes and I think we were talking off air. And I'm, I'm curious if this plays a factor in that because it was an all female cast, I'm, I'm curious if they sort of pigeon held themselves in casting because they still need female roles in all the other houses as well. So like, I'm curious if that played a factor in having a lot of empty spaces. Cause you can, you can see a boo hole with somebody not there, like, or like a little mini stage or like, I'm pretty sure somebody's supposed to be there. So I'm curious if maybe they just didn't, maybe they just either didn't get the amount of people they needed, or if maybe they said no to too many people when they could have just said yes and hired them in, maybe they'll do that in the second round. I don't know, but I'm curious just why this one had holes in it. So I'm hoping they kind of fill it up. Um, as far as comparing it to past Universal Monsters houses, I think it's more towards the bottom, unfortunately, right now for me. I I like Unmasked. I had a lot of the same problems that Seamus did with Legends Collide, but maybe not to that extreme. I didn't. I do. I still did enjoy it to an extent. Uh, Bride of Frankenstein. I I liked that, and I love the compilation house. So, unfortunately, it is going up against fairly strong competition in that world but i thought it was similar to some of those problems we had in legends collide where it's like i get we're following um was it saskia van helsing to these different areas to kind of like yeah. slay these these uh these beasts but it does jump around pretty quickly and without without that initial podcast 
I think you're completely lost in this house, which I don't know if it's necessarily a smart strategy because mm-hmm. that whole general public is not going to listen to the Discover Universal podcast before going into a house. So they're going to be sort of right. kind of I mean, whatever. I think a lot of them aren't even going to know who these characters are. No, yeah, I don't. I, I mean, don't think in so a lot either. of ways, and obviously the monsters are easy to determine because they're the monsters. But specifically Van Helsing, unless you know that story, it's really hard to understand what's going on. Yeah, which goes to a point we made probably years will, ago. At this point, put an audio outside the houses that kind of intro you, uh, intro you into this. Yeah, I think I, I I will give what this one has over Legends Collide is that the opening facade, the, the that opening scene, at least establishes some level of motivation for the at least for Van Helsing's character. So you kind of get an idea of why she's going on this crusade. Mm-hmm. But once you get beyond that, it kind of loses it. it like you're here, you're it's so there. confusing. It's, you're all over the place. You don't know what's going on. Um, it's a lot of voiceover work. Like she's telling the story as you go through, at least from what I remember. Yeah. Um, but you walk I, so quickly that you don't yeah, have time to hear that. And that's clip. the problem is like, and again, that's where universal suffers with a lot of these houses is that they force you to, like, to basically run through the house immediately. Just don't, don't stop. Keep going. Go, 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 go. We got to get people through. And I get, I get why you have to do that. But at the same time, your stories are going to suffer because it's hard to really focus on what's going on in the scenes. So for us, not a huge deal because we can go whenever we want, stay till two o'clock in the morning. And you know, when it, when it's slower, like it was near the end of the night, Sunday night, you can kind of take your your time to go through it. But even then this house is suffering somewhat from kind of being all over the place when it comes to its story. I think I'm hoping that it'll, it'll improve as the season goes on and they find either more scare actors or at least the ones that they do have find a better way of emoting and, and, and performing their role. But um, as of right now, it's, it's kind of sitting where I figured it would for me. Like it's, 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 it's good. It's a house. I enjoy it, but it's nothing that's, it's not blowing me away. I don't think it's as bad as legends collide, but it's, it's, it's not very far from it as of right now. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie, any thoughts on monsters? Yeah, I agree. It's probably not my my favorite out of the monsters houses that we've seen, unfortunately. I thought it was very similar to uh, Legends Collide, especially the scenes where they would have certain characters holding up the head of the other and stuff like that. It was just very uh, reminiscent of Legends. And then again, I wasn't a huge fan of Legends either, but I do like this a little bit better. I really like the all-female cast. I love the women empowerment through it. I wrote about that in my article today. <laughs> um, Even though I'm not a huge fan of this house, it's not a bad house by no means because the set design is great, like the characters are great, and like the story behind it is interesting. It's just, like you said, Nick, I feel like you would have to listen to the podcast episode to appreciate a little bit more, or if we had more time walking through the line in the house, we could get a little bit more of an idea of what's going on. Yeah, and then... Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess since we're talking spoilers, the ending of the house, I just don't understand. Like why? I couldn't even tell you the ending. Well, the um, Saskia Van Helsing is is like held beheaded. Like she's dead. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Are they they trying to go for the same Legends Collide thing? Where it's like a different. Is it supposed to be just her? I think I'm pretty sure she's just always her. I think so. As of now, I I I believe that's the case. Yeah, so I have this crusade the one time. Yeah, so. Keep an eye out on that, but mm-hmm. let's move on to its neighbor tent then, Goblin's Feast. Jamie, <laughs> when you talk about Goblin's Feast. Me talk about Goblin's Feast? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, me talk yeah. about Goblin's Feast. I <laughs> I really like the Goblin's <laughs> Feast house. I knew I love there's something about, I don't know, like creepy, weird for example, Insidious, the tiptoe through the tulip scene with a little boy dancing in front of the record player. D- creepy dancing little characters like that i don't know i like it. something about it i really like it so that's probably one of the funnest scenes as soon as you walk in the house you see the dancing little goblin with his back turned behind you and then he turns around really quick looks at you you find out you're on the menu they're cooking up the humans in the goblin's tavern i thought this was a really cool house with the um new tents that they have you could definitely see how much more they can execute with these houses especially um 
I feel like I haven't seen a big moving part like this in a house in a while. In the Goblin's House, like I said, these will have spoilers in it, but in the Goblin's House, there's kind of that big wooden turning like water wheel kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I thought that was super sick. I could I just thought it was very, it was massive. They had a massive stone like goblin in front of like the entrance to like the castle or like the tavern itself it was just i thought this was a really fun house this is definitely the fun house so far for the year next to like ghostbusters of course but ghostbusters was cool too but overall for i did think it was going to be a little bit scarier i still did get some good scares more so just jump scares not really like terrified scares like oh my god like that like really got me like oh you got me more kind of thing but which is still fun but i do like the goblin and the orc designs i think they're really cool you got just like we talked about in the previous episodes when we were kind of trying to figure out what it was going to be the goblins carrying the severed human leg or human arm gnawing on it i just thought it was really fun all around yeah i i enjoyed this house this is a fun mm-hmm. house it's kind of what we thought yeah uh, the first initial run I think I think I said it to somebody on one of the other days where I just I, it's so overwhelming on opening day. This was the third house we did, but it felt short to me at that time. But then going again, I, I started to recognize other rooms. I'm like, OK, this isn't as short as I thought. My brain was just kind of firing on a thousand cylinder. But um, the only thing I'm waiting to see is there's this like giant hand in there that looks like it's supposed to be puppeteered. And I've we never haven't seen, seen it, it do yet. anything. Yeah, me either. So, I'm hoping to finally see that at some point. Because I've overall, waited. I've tried to wait. Yeah. yeah. Overall, it's a very fun house. I do enjoy it. it. Is. You're, you're jigging your way through that house. And <laughs> when, while you're dancing, you kind of get some little surprise scares. But Seamus, what do you mm-hmm. think about goblins? Is this is this on Dragon's level or what? No. Um, not at all. <laughs> no. Um, no, because this no, is... You're actually, I already like it. But the thing is, but the thing is, is this house, it's advertising. You're getting what it's advertising, is my point. Like, Dueling Dragons... You get not a single dueling dragon yeah. whatsoever in that house. And if you're going to sit in here and tell me that the two static dragons with the smoke coming out of their nose was enough dragon for you, then I guess I have just higher expectations for when I'm told that we're getting a dueling dragon's house. Yeah. Um, this house, it's Goblin's Feast. It's exactly what, it's exactly what it, says it, it says it is. It's doing exactly what it, what it, what it says it's going to do. Uh, I think the characters in it are fun. Uh, I, I, it, it's, 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 it's an upbeat house for for a haunted attraction, so I, I you know, I, I wasn't going into it expecting to be blown away, um, scare wise or visual wise. I just think it's a fun, you know, like you guys said with the Irish Irish music or or, or, or just say Celtic music that's playing in the background it makes you kind of want to like Irish step dance through the house, and I, I think that's, I, I, I don't know, I that house, although it's not my favorite, I think this one could could you know get better and better as the season goes on um and i and i think that this character this is one of those ones where the characters can just have a good time with it mm-hmm. yeah um you're not going you don't have to go super hard to try to get people because that's not what people are going through this house for anyways so i think it's it works it works really well um and it adds some levity to the event so i figured this kind of would be that house uh, but as of right now the one time i've gone through it i'm actually pleasantly surprised how much i liked it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's move now. We're going to have to move all the way over to the Fast and the Furious queue, which is kind of a new little setup over there. So Major Sweets Candy Factory, who wants to tackle this one? I got this one. So this one, um, so it completely took out the worries that I had with the split. So they did a much better job of manipulating the space and utilizing that space. Uh, that I hope will will kind of carry forward year to year, unless that ride gets taken down at some point. Um, so it worked well there. I enjoy most of the scenes in this. I think that it, I mean, you get crazy candy factory and people eating candy that they shouldn't be and making them go crazy. I think this house uh, somewhat represents the, the the feeling of the scare zone i think it's obviously its own thing it's not necessarily like beat for beat from what the scare zone was i think the scare zone was something in particular and this is a continuation of that story or if you want to call it a prequel to that story either way but it still gives you somewhat of that feeling that you get with the scare zone so i, I liked it i i think i needed to do it again 
a few more times to really oh, yeah. kind of start like at least presenting myself with a little bit more of a clearer picture about where I where I would rank this. But as of right now, the first the one time I did do it, I did it. Um, I enjoyed it. So yeah, I I think this house could get better as as the year goes on. Yeah, I I like it. it. It originally it wasn't exactly what I thought. I it it went. I think you guys were more in tune to what it was going to be. You kind of thought more industrial. I was thinking big wacky colors, but it it didn't really do that. So that first initial run, I was happy, but I was kind of like, dang, I kind of I was hoping for that like really colorful wacky style thing. But then I kind of got the fill of that in goblins and a little bit in slaughter. So. Once I returned to the Major Sweets Candy Factory, I, I find myself enjoying it that much more now, knowing what I'm kind of in for. And it does have that ridiculous like body gore horror style stuff. Uh-huh. The characters in the house are are great. They fit their roles. There's three guest activated triggers. So look for the two red buttons and also look for the little candy dish that says mm-hmm. take one uh, because they will activate stuff and it's fun. But I had an overall fun time with it. There's a lot in this house. For there such is. a small space, there's a lot of stuff you have to look at. So go through multiple Which I times, like. look above you, look below you. There's stuff everywhere. Like in that little intro, there's like a little rat running in and out of a hole. Uh, there's I know, one I didn't hallway even see where, that the first time. Yeah, there's one hallway that if you look up, it's got like taffy spinning around these giant wheels. Mm-hmm. Oh, that uh, was just really There's cool. a lot of fun stuff like hitting and hidden in there. So Jamie, any thoughts on Major Suites or they kind of cover it all? You guys pretty much nailed it all. Really enjoy this house. I did forget about I pointed that out the other night too when we noticed that the taffy at the top. I thought that was so fun. I like the um <laughs> they have a static character or static like mannequin at the end kind of like on a stage and it's like the guy like in a suit but like has like the lollipop like stabbed for a head. Mm-hmm. I just really like that one. I thought that's fun. A lot of fun like little quirky things in this house. I love it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it and I can't wait to get back into it and see what else I can find in there. And it's uh, always so moving, nice to see returning characters. That's the last thing I want yeah. to say. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, it's fun when scare zones come to get that call up mm-hmm. to the major leagues, so to speak. So Definitely. let's move along to New York now, where I believe that next house we'll see is Triplets of Terror. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that one's fun. It was kind of what I expected, right? It was kind of their own take on slashers. I follow. I can follow the story. You know, you walk in to whatever it is the '40s or something like that, the '40s or '50s, where the children committed these murders on their birthday. Great little facade, and then you go into this little podcast room that kind of gives you this time jump to the future, like where now crime. they're recreating. They're they're recreating these murders, and I thought it was all very fun, inventive. Uh, not the scariest house, but I love the design on the characters. I thought some of those really funny set pieces, like the big giant guy that's like on the ground mm-hmm. um, in what looks to be like a dry cleaner or something. There was some some store mm-hmm. aspect to it, but I, I really enjoyed this house. It was what I wanted. It was gory horror slasher birthday. Like there, there's really other than that, I, I can't really say it's it. It, I can't say it blew my mind away, but it was exactly kind of what I wanted and what I thought it was going to be. It's right there in that mid to upper tier, I'd say, for the time being. But I have to go through again and kind of get a good, a better feel for it. So any other thoughts for triplets? Oh, I loved it. I really like the, uh, the um, podcast-like aspect of a kind of true crime thing too. I didn't really expect that from the house or didn't know that that was going to be it. thought it was just more so going to be a bunch of gore and yada 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 all the murders all that kind of stuff but i just love the set design of this one it really <laughs> i kind of knew and we kind of knew it was going to be like that before it's definitely giving a little bit of rob zombie gives a little bit of house of thousand corpses and i am just here for it i think it's so much fun um harmony melody and junior i think are our triplets names if i'm not mistaken that we learned from our little tour that we did the other day but I just really like that, that it has a story behind it too. And I feel like it added some things that I didn't expect to see. I have only doing this. I think I've only done this house once. Honestly, I don't think I had a second run through it of it yet, but I could just imagine it getting better from there. Cause I feel like the run that I did have, I missed a couple of the scares, but I did still really enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to see how it does over the next couple of months. And I'm glad to see that the reception for it has been pretty good as well. It seems like people are liking it too. 
Well, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So no, that's that. a good thing. There's, there's that. Um, that is good. I, I mean, as of right now, I've only done it once. Again, I, I, all of these I've only done once. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. But I, as of right now, it's still pretty weak for me. Um, Jamie, you say it's a little like Rob Zombie. I say it's a fuck ton like Rob Zombie. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's it feels like It <laughs> feels like, and this is why I think I didn't want to say it. that and say that they were kind of, but it, it feels no, I mean, that House of Corpses. So, void for so me. for you <laughs> you're getting everything you want out of it i feel like they're ripping it off and i that's fair i don't think that it's a bad thing necessarily i mean obviously um what is it inspiration or or no what, what, what is the finest form of flattery oh uh, uh, whatever yeah I, imitation is the imitation. finest form of, of flattery excuse me um can't get my idioms correct but uh, i think that it does what it's set up setting out to do so it does that effectively. It's very gory. So if you like gory houses, this is for you. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I do enjoy about it is it kind of feels to me like those 90s remakes, those like 90s or mid 2000s slasher remakes where like the whole opening 25 minutes of the movie is like, you know, snippets of crimes that have happened by committed by some mysterious murderer with a police voiceover or a podcast voiceover or something Uh like that it feels kind of like that investigative um thingy and then you kind of go through the scenes of 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 them recreating all of the the famous crimes or whatever so i think if that's what you're looking for a very hell billy-esque slasher gory fun balls to the walls type of house this is this is for you i'm also completely thrown off by the fact that they 100 percent just used the stranger things trailer <laughs> yeah you realize that like that, that whole trailer is just yeah. the stranger yeah. things set, yeah. right yes um and that pulls me out of it a little bit I, I hate to say it i'm sorry i know that some people are gonna be like well dude that, that's what you're worried about no but it really does like it when you first walk in it feels like you're walking into um you know Chrissy's trailer. Chrissy, wake up! When you're walking Chrissy, through, when you're um, walking his through the kitchen, too, it looks just it, like it, it feels very much like they just took Stranger Things and said, "All right, well, let's put in a whole new story into this set." And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't mind them using assets and things like that, but it definitely threw me off somewhat. It makes um, me wonder if there was supposed to be something else there and not Triplets of Terror. Maybe, maybe, but. I, I still think that that throws me off just, mm-hmm. just slightly. Yeah. Um, but again, I wasn't going into this house with a lot of hope anyways. So, I mean, for it to be better than I expected, I think that's a good thing. I just can't imagine that it's going to get, I, I don't know if it's going to win me over. That's my only thing. So if everybody, you know, don't jump down my throat at the end of the season, when we do our final rankings, I don't have mm-hmm. this ranked incredibly high. Cause I just yeah. wasn't, it's just, it's just not for me. Yeah, let me. I, I'm going to take just a quick stab at this, and we can dissect it a little bit on a later episode. But I, if I were to guess, maybe we did have nightmare, and this is what replaced it. Yeah, because you yeah, have kind of that boiler room aspect. You have the kitchen yep. scene. You have yeah. sort of a house facade that could have been manipulated a little bit differently. Right. Um, and this is your year. usual slasher house too. So, so mm-hmm. at, yeah. we could look at the house a little bit more in depth later. But I, I think this. I didn't want to say it to spill the beans, but that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe um, since they didn't do it, they were just like, fuck it. We're going to keep this trailer and make something out of it. So we don't go take down the front of the stranger things facade. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what happened back in the day when they had scream and they had to replace it to the purge, you know, the house that was there, Mm -hmm. they're not going to tear down the whole build and start over. Oh, of course not. Dress it up a little bit differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's move. I think next door into insidious. So, uh, Seamus, why don't or yeah, Seamus, why don't you take Insidious? Because I don't think the next one. You yeah. sure? This is oh. like Jamie's thing. She was all about. Yeah, this you can do Insidious, and then I'll do Quiet Place, and then you'll do Ghost. Yeah, 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 we'll do that. I was trying all to. Right, that's fine. I was trying Jamie, to line Jamie, it up please, accordingly. Please cut in on me whenever you feel feel it necessary. Go ahead. It's okay. This house is incredible. Um, I've said it. I enough. was. <laughs> I I I. I, not that I didn't think it was going to be good. I had it low on my hype list because I'm not a big Insidious movie fan. Like I, I watch it. The movies are fine. I like the first one. Um, have uh, I've never really had anything bad to say about the first movie. Haven't watched any of the others, so I really can't judge them. But I just it was never one that like made me go. I have to sit down and watch these. 
But after going through this house, I may have to sit down and watch the rest of these movies. Um, this house is crazy. It's just I, I everything I expected it to be. It's that and two full uh, add two full to that. Like it's just so much better than I think I, I that I had ever imagined it being. Um, it's long as hell. Like you, if if, if you're yeah. someone that's like, man, I wish these houses were like three or four scenes longer. This house, there are like th- three points in it where I go. Why is this still going? Holy shit. Like, are we, is this, when is this ending? Is this ever going to end? The video and I did at media night, I think I looked at the timestamp. I think it was like almost a six minute house, which is pretty yeah, long. I mean, this house. house, this house is incredibly long and it's good. It's a good thing. Like, this is, um, I think people have been asking for something like this. Like, give us, a, just, just give us a hardcore, long ass, like, long ass house. And it does everything it needs to. It hits every single beat that you needed to hit. Um, that opening facade is incredible. That that house when you're first walking that, into that house, he's got your baby. <laughs> yeah, holy shit, dude! Like, I love it's just, it. It is the scariest house as of right now. Uh, I don't think anything is going to be scary. I don't think anything's going to top it. I really don't. When it comes to like the scares, I think this house is good. It got me three times, and I don't mean like got it me. Got all like, of us. You know, like Seamus, obviously, you know, he he he, he anticipates everything, which I do. I, just, I anticipate a lot of mm-hmm. things. It got me genuinely three times. Um, it has three, three mannequin rooms. So fuck you, Universal. You just, you, you just know how to get me. Because like, mm-hmm. I'm, I, and I know it sounds stupid, but whenever we go into, go into a house with those rooms, I'm like this the whole time through those parts. And I'm just ducking and dodging because I just, I'm not sure who's coming from where it's, they're really good at that set at, at that setup, and I just I don't know I just I, I love it I so much. I can behind me. Oh, son of a bitch! As soon as I <laughs> saw the mannequins, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Like those rooms, they get me. And then they probably have the best mirror effect they've ever done in this house. And, so I, and cool. I don't mean that. And I don't mean that in in. I mean, but when I what I'm trying to say is like I mean that with all, every ounce of honesty. It they use this they utilize this mirror trick quite often in many houses where it makes it look like you know there's nothing there or it's a different type of room and then someone comes out and gets you. They have a jail cell scene in this in this house using that mirror trick, and it 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 is so effective that I didn't expect it at all um, when I walked by it and it and it completely got me <laughs> completely unawares. So it is really really good. Um, if you haven't been through the house yet, look out for that. Um, Cause it's, you're going to be taken by so much. It's just so, inc- it's just so good. It's so good. Um, and I can't wait to go back and do it again. Cause I don't know. I just, I, this is, this is the house that I think I didn't, ex- I compared it somewhat to exorcist the other night, but I think it's better than that. I think the exorcist, the really, really wasn't expecting anything and it turned out to be pretty good. And it, it turned out to be really scary. This house, I, 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 I had some level of expectation for it, but it completely blew away any expectation I had set previously mm-hmm. for it. So um, this could be the high, this probably will be the highest jumping house in my in my ranking list from where it was when we hyped it to where we final where where, where it lands or ends up on my on my final rankings. Mm-hmm. This house is so good, and we got lucky too. It was like a seventy minute wait that we ended up only waiting like thirty, 30 minutes. minutes. So yeah. it was it was a solid night. So. Um, and if it's that good opening weekend, can you imagine what it's going to be like, you know, mid October? Yeah. These I mean, people, they're firing on all cylinders already. Like it's, it seems knew. like it's mid October for them. Yeah. Hype to live up to. They were like, we got to be scary. <laughs> we got to be good. <laughs> but no, it's yeah. such a fantastic house. I love it so much. And I, it's going to be one of those houses where I look back at the event and I'm like, damn, I wish I could do that house again. Like I'd love to see that house again kind of thing. It's just so. <sighs> I don't know. I just feel like we haven't had like a scary, scary like house in a while. And I'm not, and I don't mean with just like jump scares or like cheapy, like behind the corner pop out at you kind of thing. Like genuine, like visual terror, like obviously jump scare terror, like the music, just like the movie quality, like set design of this whole entire house just amazed me. The whole facade when you walk in literally through the house. And I did expect it to be a little bit more 
based on just like in the further itself but i really do like that we got to see some scenes from like the original movie like the scene when they're in callie's bedroom and it's like the red pink light like hue like over the bedroom and they have the guy standing behind her like bassinet which is one of my favorite scenes from the whole movie they just they really did it all with this house and i can't wait to do it again it's definitely one of if you go to the event and you could only go once or twice it's definitely the must-see house like you have to go <laughs> even if the no, wait the wait is, is worth it that house this yeah. house is the house that if you can only do so many of them You'll you have to do, do this house yeah. um if if I, and i haven't even done it yet if you if you have to pick between like this and a quiet place or something like that you do Please this one this yeah yeah and i know that everyone isn't uh, again i haven't done a quiet place yet so i i, I can't judge it but from everything i've heard it's not as good as people expected it to be or not and this well, is just our personal that, opinions too i'm not hating if you want to do a quiet place by all means do it but uh, we're just saying yeah this i is mean a- sure but i think what out. we're trying to say is that this house is you can't miss this house like if you if you have to give one up don't give this one up yeah yeah i mean all my thoughts are pretty much right there with you guys i this is how you do a franchise ip house this is how you accomplish that compilation mm-hmm. style house by saying it in sort of your own original take, but still within the world. Um, yeah, the scares are on point. The characters seem like they've been doing this thing for months already. I have no gripes with this thing. It is it is doing exactly what I wanted it to do, and I couldn't ask for more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about Insidious again at some points when we kind of re-rank and mm-hmm. once we have some more runs. But uh, for now, I think that's a good spot to leave Insidious. So let's yes. move to its next-door neighbor, and that is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, as somebody who doesn't necessarily love this entry in the franchise, uh, the house is fine. Um, it does it does a lot of things that the 29 house didn't accomplish that people were upset at. We got the Ecto-1 in there. We have about a character for everybody. You know, like just every just about everybody is represented. You got a tiny little bit of Ghostbusters 2 love in there. And the only and there's one part in there when the, the firehouse is like transitioning into the ice and it's like freezing with with the projector on it. I thought that was just mm-hmm. a cool little trick. Yeah, I think my my the one thing that I wish I could change on this is I wish those frozen scenes, those frozen rooms. I wish there was more of them because that's probably I really what I think them. is I the shining cool. moment of the house is yeah. that first scene where you're in that like adventurers club and like. The little frozen hand is is revving the the, mm-hmm. the juke uh, not the jukebox but the uh, the vinyl the record player and you mm-hmm. can almost hear the crystals like moving just such a, a fun little detail in there so I I do enjoy this house. I, I like this house a lot more than I like the movie honestly it's yeah. it's fun it's it's kind of along the lines of what we sort of suspected uh, I think I had this at around my ten I it's a tough year it really is a tough year because there's no clear cut ten. This is, you know, there, there's a couple that are on that lower tier right now for me. But, you know, as far as like comparing stuff to last year, like there's no Chucky ultimate kill count this year. All the houses are 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 good. I don't want to say they're all very mm-hmm. good. Um, I think that's one of the big differences of this event and the last couple of years. There's no like for me, like very, you know, insidious, like we just talked about how good it is. But there's no clear cut wicked growth. There's no clear cut graveyard games. There's no like darkest deal. Like there's no darling of the event at a solid, very high number one for me right now. Everything is just very, everything's very good, you know, but without that excellent house. But Ghostbusters is right there. You know, it's it's exactly what you would want. The characters are fun. They're playing their roles. They cast this thing perfectly. All these people that are, you know, playing these other roles look very similar to the cast itself and they do a lot of cool little tricks in here so you're gonna have fun in it expect to have fun and if you're not a huge frozen empire fan uh, but you like ghostbusters you'll still enjoy it because that's kind of my my perception of it as well i like the house i didn't love the movie necessarily but i still had a great time but what do you guys any other thoughts on ghostbusters frozen empire I thought this one was really fun. No, and I'm agree. usually not a huge fan of Ghostbusters. I thought it was nice that they added a couple nods to the first and the second one. Some characters we know, some scenes that we are familiar with. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. And those frozen rooms, Nick, I got to agree. Those were super cool. 
<laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah, I agree with everything Nick said. I don't really have anything else to add other than I, I like the Slimer yeah. near the end of the house. Which is funny because like you see the Slimer <laughs> guy and then you like kind of look down and you see the little feet of a human and you're like, oh, don't say it. it. Don't ruin don't the magic. <laughs> it's Slimer. It doesn't, it's but, but it's fun. It doesn't really, it's a, again, their ability to to work puppetry into these houses is really, is, is bar none. You yeah. Know, no one else can do it like they can. So, yeah. So I enjoy this one. So Jamie, why don't you tackle the next one? That's a quiet place. And because Jamie hasn't done this one yet, we can kind of go through this even quicker with, I guess, a little less spoilers. Yeah. I can just um, mute you. How about that? Is, no, it's okay. <laughs> I don't really have too just much. Just do a, a quick, <laughs> a quick little very, we'll do this one almost as spoiler free as possible. Yeah. So, what I can say about this house is that they executed the ability for it to be quiet to an extent. When you, I'm trying to think of how to phrase it without doing too many spoilers. Probably the first scene and a half that you walk through, it's executed really well. And I really like what they did with it. I think the um, puppetry that they used for the creatures and the different characters that they had looked almost spot on to those from the movie. Um, the different scenes that were in the house. I think our guide had said it featured scenes from the first, second, and the newest movie, but I didn't really it's notice the first and second. From the I was going to no, say, I didn't notice any from the, the newest. Two. And I was like, eh, but she could have been wrong, but that's okay. But... Yeah, as you guys have known and heard from listening to other episodes, Quiet Place wasn't very high on my hype list. Wasn't too excited about this. Personally, I didn't think it was terrible. Was I a huge fan? Not really, but it was very cool. And I think it's awesome that they um, added this in there. But I got to see some of the scare actors using the ASL and signing with each other and signing to guests and stuff like that. And I thought that was really cool that they did that. You usually have never seen something like that in a house before. And... Yeah, I just thought it was – overall, it just didn't really do it for me. Just because I'm not a huge fan of these movies, I didn't really feel like I had anything to like look forward to that I specifically wanted to see in this house. It was a cool house, and it was well done, but just didn't do what it could have done for me, I guess. Yeah, I got to um, that makes do this. Yeah, I, ha- I have to do this house again. I've only done I, it once. I had, uh, I had some fun with it, that's for sure. The one mm-hmm. thing that I took away is I, I don't know if it necessarily fully plays on the fact that like you have to be quiet. Like I don't know mm-hmm. if it really – every haunted house is better if you're quiet. Like, it doesn't have much of a soundtrack. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the point, right? It's supposed Compared to be to, like – That's what I'm saying. That definitely makes yeah. a difference, I feel like. Yeah, well, for me, it's <laughs> like you want to be quiet in, in houses as a guest because you want to be able to get – shooken up by those sudden sounds and those pop-ups and stuff like that. So I, I I get that they're being quiet throughout this house, but I don't know if it necessarily like adds anything major to it. They do a good job at making it quiet. Like it is, it is a quiet place style level of, of audio, but I don't know if that necessarily added anything for me in particular, but you know, a lot of puppets in this house. And for me, I'm not a big puppet person, like a couple puppets here and there to like make do are, are, can can work but when we're relying on it too much and too often i kind of miss that character like interaction of people so some are better than others there's one puppet in there in particular that i think is very very cheesy i think it looks almost like disney like old disney ride level of of animatronics it just kind of didn't hit home for me, but that's that's my thought on a quiet place. I, I definitely have to do it more to me to, too. Um, yeah, but, but the characters, like the people, characters in there are are amazing. For me, it's just the fact that it's a lot. That's what I'm saying. They look pop- really good. Yeah. Yeah. No, all the characters, like the characters in that house, are awesome. Mm-hmm. Again, it's just a tough translation of a movie, and I don't know if I. It is. I don't know if I fully got it yet. I, I need mm-hmm. to go again and do it more because. Yeah. F- for everything that I don't like about it, I think the characters sort of make up for and equal it mm-hmm. back out for me. So I just, it's tough. Like with that house, it, it's when the main, you know, villain or monster or whatever is, is not portrayed by a, a person. It kind of, it's hard. It's tough for me. Yeah. Cause it, they don't get into your face. You know, the people do, but 
the little monsters, like they can only do so much. So mm-hmm. it's a little bit of a tricky spot. So th- I think they'll figure it out. But uh, but that's quiet place. So let's move on now to our Monstros. last house. Monstros mm-hmm. wants to handle Monstros. I only how many times did you do this one? I only ran this one once. I'm pretty sure. I might done it a couple times. It's it's yeah, I can handle it. Um, I feel like only because I feel like I'll add into it, but you go ahead, Nick. I just didn't get I missed a lot in this house, which is unfortunate because I was really excited for this one. And I feel like I just missed like every scare by like a millisecond. Yeah, I like it. It starts out kind of how we expected with La Muerta kind of mm-hmm. talking us through what's happening. You, you get guide. very distinct starts and stops of these different monsters areas. Um I forget which ones are which, but you have Lilachusa, you have, was it Telepucci, and you have the, uh, I forget what the little witch style character is. It's very are. hard to pronounce, and I don't want to try to pronounce it. It's uh, Lilachusa. I just wrote about it today. I should. The Telepucci yes. and the last one. I forget, but either way, I, I don't have a definitive which one I like the best. El Silibon. This- Oh, so oh, El Sabon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Yes. I think that one's. I think that one's my favorite character. Mine too. Um, Very cool. Or I like that. <clears throat> But we obviously got the big animatronic over from Hollywood, so that's a fun little scene. Very, Super very cool. cool. The this house has scenic. It has smells. It has start and stops. Like I said, which is for me good. I still haven't watched the Hollywood video. Now that I've watched through our house, I, I'll allow myself to watch that. So I got to see like what we did to differentiate it. Uh, I, I thought it was good. I, if, I think if you like Chupacabras, I think you're going to love this house. I think it's uh, I, I think it's a great interpretation of, of what Hollywood did. So I'm excited to go back and watch what they did and see how we kind of, I don't want to say one-upped them, but we, we brought it to our scale. But I, I, had a, I had a fun with it. The only, the only problem I had with it was that very ending scene. Again, it was like a s- animatronic guy by like a grave site. And it was just like, you couldn't have put a person there. Or, you know, it just, that looked very like spirit Halloween-y. Like, like goodbye. Like the, Thanks yeah, for yeah. coming. And it's like, you know, a Twitcher or whatever they call those things. So I thought that that was, again, that's kind of, um, that's, that's my one problem with the event as a whole right now is oh. I feel like there's a lot of puppets and like static figures where mm. you could have put a person like a character, but overall I, I do enjoy this house. This and a quiet place, I think are the ones that maybe because I didn't do them on Sunday seem the furthest from my memory. So mm. I got to give these ones a couple more runs to, to go through, but any thoughts on Seamus? Did you like this? The monsters, monsters of Latin America? Yeah, it was okay. Again, I only did it once. So Again, I can't really judge it for you know too yeah. hard, but I, I think that for being as hyped as it was for me, I, it, um, it's a little lackluster. But I think that maybe that's just because, again, I've only done it one time, and you're gonna miss stuff. Yeah, and I'm gonna miss things. And I think, like Jamie said, like the one time I did it, I missed a lot of the scares. So I don't know if that 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 goes into part of it for me. But um, I'm hoping that subsequent runs it'll it'll improve yeah there was a handful of uh holes when i did it last yeah all right so quickly before we sign off let's get to some call-ins we had a handful of these um from posts i put up so let's just get into these really quick and then we'll we'll sign on off and get ready for week two hey this is josh from orlando florida i know such a far way to go had some thoughts about opening weekends. Um, was only able to go y- last night. Uh, got to do all ten houses though. Um, Insidious was far better than it should have been. Um, the amount of actors that they had in that house was astounding, and the amount of triple scares that they did was even better. Um, a quiet place was a great walk through pretty much everybody that was in line with us stayed quiet through the whole time. So it made for a really great walk through. Um, 
Slaughterhouse, breaks my heart to say, was kind of let down. I don't know if we were in the middle of a cast change, but the last half of the house, it was like nobody was in there. So I'm hoping for a better run next time. Um, Triplets of Dare, I hated that house. (laughs) I don't know what the thought was on it. I don't feel like there was much of a storyline going on. If there was, I was missing it. Um, I think it sucks that they wasted that house in a soundstage. I think that would have been benefited more in a tent and had either, either Goblin Feast or Universal Monsters in the in the sound station place of it. What can you do? Outside of that, all the other houses were great. Look forward to another run on Wednesday. Thanks. Have a great day. Hated triplets. Hated That's them. crazy, my friend. Makes me sad. But I can't. That's how I feel like about museum. I feel like immediately if there was a house that I had to go to that I was like, I just did not like it, probably be that one. Yeah, I mean, hate's a strong word, I think, for it, but I am with him on the fact that it he makes a good point that I didn't bring up, but I agree with, is it is a waste of a of a soundstage. I am surprised that they put that there. Yeah. Which is why I think part of it goes towards what Nick was saying, where this was supposed to be nightmare or something along those lines. They needed to put that in a soundstage and then it pulled out. So now they need to do something else. So they just kept it where it was going to be in the begin with. Um, But it definitely feels like it's a waste to put it in there. And I also think that that speaks somewhat to why it looks like Stranger Things. Because I think they just kept some of that set up and said, we'll just reconvert some of this set. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I agree with them on that, too. So I wouldn't say I hate it. But at the same time, I do think this is probably going to be one of the weaker, weaker houses for me. So I agree with him on that. Yeah. All right, let's get into our next one. Fear and Fear. This is Evil Adam from Blood and Guts HHN on YouTube. Just calling to to get you guys' opinion on uh, opening weekend. It looks pretty good. Um, the houses look solid this year. I think that, you know, once the actors come into their own, once they actually get together and learn each other's rhythms, you know, learn, you know, a great attack pattern, these houses are going to just be be amazing but we will be in the fog next week I look forward to seeing all you guys in the fog and you know see this awesome event stay spooky yeah that's a it's a great point obviously first week right there's jitters there's learning your role everything we've said tonight obviously grain of salt it because everyone's doing their part they're they're trying to figure it all out this is not an easy task by any means so i, I think we have a very strong year of houses like ahead of us. Hey, if you're here, I was just asking if, if you guys were, um, if you guys preferred the IPs that were represented this year or the IPs that were represented last year. Thank you guys. Mm, IPs this year versus IPs last year. Last year. Last year. <laughs> Easily. With, <laughs> last with Insidious, year. you're picking last year? Yeah. Over with what Stranger Things 4 exorcist believer and what else do we even have so we had exorcist um stranger things stranger things chucky um chucky chucky mm-hmm. um and what am i missing right now oh last oh, of um, us the last of us last of us and then, and then um monsters but monsters kind monsters of. which yeah. i guess is your pseudo ip yeah, I mean, Ooh, even that with, actually is it's a closed. harder question to answer than I think. I think with Insidious, this year is pushing. Is like it's it's pushing for yes, this is better, um, just of because of how good Insidious is. I haven't done a Quiet Place yet, as I've stated. So I think once I've done a Quiet Place, I can probably answer it better. Um, but last year, regardless how weak Chucky was. Um, and regardless of how I feel about The Last of Us, I think as of right now, the IPs last year were stronger. Overall, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but then again, I got to do I got to do a quiet place to to really make a determination because we had one extra we had technically one extra uh, IP last year and uh, again Monsters was incredibly strong last year. Mm-hmm. Um, the Last of Us was a well done house even if I didn't really like it. Right. Um, and um, Stranger Things again, it was still pretty good. So I don't know. I, I think that Insidious by itself could carry, but it, 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 it'd be hard to say because of Insidious, this year's IPs are better than last year's. Yeah, that's it's it's a tough one for sure. But let's move on to this next one because it kind of ties into the last one a little bit. Hey there, just wanted to give you my take on opening weekend. Not a huge IP fan. Um, typically, I'm more of an original house fan, but uh, this year's IPs are pretty strong. I mean, short and to the point, and I I think this is Jamie's sort of year where the IPs are kind of kicking a little bit. Uh-huh. I, I, I do think overall, like we were just kind of talking about in the last call, and the IPs overall, I think, are just a little... There's no, like, clear bottom. Like, they're all right there with one another. And Sidious is great. Quiet Place is sitting right there as well. And I, I just... I, I, Ghostbusters I think is fun. there's overall, yeah, Ghostbusters is, is right there. There's mm-hmm. no like definitive dead weight, which yeah. unfortunately what happened with Kill Count. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's it's it is a strong strange. year for IPs. Yeah, especially for me enjoying IP so much. Like even if it's something I'm not as interested in, like I still want to enjoy it. And I feel like that's how it is so far with these. With like I'm not a huge fan of Quiet Place or Ghostbusters, but I've still – enjoyed the houses for what they were so mm-hmm. yeah so let's get into this next one real quick hey there went three nights of opening weekend and all i have to say is ghostbusters is a sleeper again short and to the point i i do I like it it is good it is i i do think it is a sleeper i think it is mm-hmm. because the ip itself is not the most prominent or like mm-hmm. something that people would pick you know, i would say and a Quiet Place and Insidious have kind of rocked these heavy weights, and I haven't seen Ghostbusters hit like a ridiculous weight yet. I think people are really forgetting how how well Universal can take really any idea and, and put a decent house together. So I, I'm right there. I, I do I do enjoy Ghostbusters Frozen Empire a lot more than I thought I would. But let's get into our last call in, and then we can get ready to get in the fog tomorrow. Hey guys, Matt. Um, favorite scare zone this year was Demon Queens. Uh, favorite house was Insidious, Slumber Cinema. I can't really decide. Although A Quiet Place, definitely up there. That surprised me. Um, Nocturnal Circus, phenomenal. I honestly think it was the best part of this year's event and last thing in the Blumhouse Care Zone that Wolfman display is there supposed was there supposed to be a Wolfman standing there or something because it sure seemed like there was something missing from that uh alright bye yeah so the whole Wolfman thing um, I, I, the trailer's not out yet. I think, I think the trailer comes out in a few weeks. So I think once the trailer drops, there'll be somebody there. Cause there's a floor trigger there for somebody to be there and their speakers. Yeah. So there's definitely supposed to be somebody there. I think just mm-hmm. because the trailer hasn't come out yet, they haven't put anybody out there, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, demon Queens is up there for me as well. And insidious and slaughter are fighting Those in that top, top couple spots. Yeah, for sure. So, but that's, yeah, it's really everything you said is kind of aligned with what we have as well. But all right. Well, that about wraps us up. If you wait until the very end of this episode, wait till the end, because I'm going to have to tack it on after uh, we did our own fear and beer fantasy football league, 16 teams. It's wild. Um, But one of the members, they recorded a little like five or five or so minute recap of the draft and ranking the teams. So if you listen, if you're in the league, listen to the very end of this episode and we'll, we'll, we'll tag that on there. And this might be something we do uh, going forward. We might do like a little, 
kind of Chris Berman style, fastest three minutes of like weekly recaps of who beat who and who outperformed and stuff like that. So, uh, so stick around to the very, very end and listen to uh, Jason go through our draft recap. So until then, until next time, this is Nick. This is Seamus. And this is a very tired Jamie. <laughs> Happy haunts. We'll see you in the fog. It's Halloween. I guess everyone's a type of one bit scared. <laughs>、like、to thank Vampire Stepdad for letting us use his music for our intro and outro music. So if you would just go check him out, Spotify, Facebook. Again, that is Vampire Stepdad.